Welcome back to the Sean Trey Show. I have a really interesting guest with me today. Now, would you like to introduce yourself and tell people who you are and what you do? Well, Sean, thanks so much for having me on your show today. And I'm Kirsty Manna. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm a hit songwriter and creativity expert. I'm a keynote performer, speaker, and also a publisher. And I also, for the last year, have been running Lucky Sky Music. It's a small label here in Nashville um, with my husband, Bill Warner, who's a producer engineer. And I'm the creative director there. I oversee publishing. So that's really awesome. That's what I do. That's what I do. And I'm also a big cat lover. And I, uh, that's awesome. I do a lot of volunteer. I do a lot of volunteer work with animal welfare here in Nashville. That's really cool. Now, now you wear a lot of hats. There, there is yeah. a lot that you do. Now, now, how, how do you juggle all of these these different interests? Because it's not just jobs. These are things that you're interested in. You know, there's a passions. It, it's true, and that's what I really believe about creativity. Is that you have to really go after things that make you excited and things that you love to do that, you know, you're really inspired to do. Yeah. And I'm just fortunate in my career that I've had different opportunities happen for me and they've opened different doors up. You know, for example, when I, when, when Blake Shelton first put Austin out, I got involved with a really cool administ- publishing administrator. Her name was Peggy Bradley. She passed away now, but she was this really cool lady. And I went into her office and she had all these things piled on her desk, you know, and I thought, wow, this lady's got a lot going on. I'm interested to talk to her. And she taught me so much about publishing. And that's when I really got interested in in the publishing world. And I think it's really important for songwriters to understand how all of that works, because it's an ever changing business. Right. You know, the publishing publishing entity it, so it, it it totally is ever changing because you know it, it was one way for a long time and then we introduced streaming and streaming has completely yes. changed the game and there was a i took a class at berkeley college of music and it was a, just a music business class they they put online for free uh-huh. and there was a great yeah. line that the professor would say if it plays you get paid Hey, you said that to me before the other day, and I think that is a really good way to explain it to people, or you should get paid. You should get paid. (laughs) You have to do certain things if you want to get paid. You have to to be a business person as a songwriter now, and and so much has changed for artist writers. They're expected to do so many things, and, you know, the social media thing, being one of them and it's completely autonomous of course from being a publishing guru or a publishing uh expert but i think it's important for people to understand you know how they're paid and in every and you're of course in vietnam and so every country has their own way that they pay through their performing rights organizations which are different than the streaming platforms but it's it's really important to understand that and you know, to attend seminars, workshops, webinars, things like that, that can, that can keep you updated on the info. And that, that's really interesting that you point out that I'm in Vietnam because it, it's still though tricky because we've entered this world music uh, arena. Yeah. Like, you know, you get people yeah. from that people that are performing in English or in other languages that their songs are heard globally now, you know, you, you, exactly. look, you look at K-pop for one, you know, K-pop is streaming not just in Korea, but all over Asia, in Europe, in the yes. U.S. now. And they're going to need to get paid, you know. So you right. have to know how to do that. You have to understand. And what and what I was speaking of in regards to you being in Vietnam is uh, that the PROs are different in every yes. country. You mm-hmm. know, and, and the way that we get paid domestically in the United States, it, I think, you know, we're one of the few countries that, all the people, all the creators that are involved aren't getting paid for, through the PRO, but they're getting paid now through the streaming. And also people that are artists, writers, they need to understand about sound exchange because that's all about yeah. the master. And that has nothing. We're getting into a deep subject here, but it has no, no, nothing no. to do really with the streaming platforms. Yeah. The streaming platforms, are, you know. Like the, I was talking to you about the MLC, the Mechanical Licensing Collective, which is something they've been working on for 20 years here in the States. And that's 
about the publishers and the songwriters. It has really nothing to do with the ma- the master ownership. And then let's talk about that for two seconds. The master ownership of a of a of a copyright that's its own copyright. Yeah. So if you own the master to a song, you wield a lot of power because they're if you, if for example your song gets put into a movie or a TV show and they're asking for permission for the use the person that owns the master can kind of make or break that opportunity yeah so it's it's really important to have all that stuff straight in the states that you know they're like over the top with that kind of thing anybody that yeah. you pitch to for sync um, you have to have all that stuff cleared. And, and so that's why you see so many artists being in house with their creations. Yeah. You know, they're, they, they're able to produce, sing, play, you know, all that on that track. Yeah. And then they own everything. And then yeah. there's nobody else to go and say, Hey, do you want to have this song in a movie? You know? And then yeah. if, if that other creator, your co-creator doesn't get permission, you're kind of dead in the water, you know? Yeah. When I was looking at, like, there was a, one of the people that was a real, like, because for a long time, everything was going through major labels, you know? But then, then like, one of the people that was a really interesting one was Macklemore. Macklemore came along. Yeah. And he, he did everything. He owned everything. He was his own label. He, he right. was the complete, you know, uh, and, and complete package. And I think it was really... Right. And because before that, you know, people to, to get the upper echelon performers, there was always some other entity involved, but not with Macklemore. It was him, you know, and super impressive. Well, and the thing, too, was, you know, in days gone by, there was no way for an artist to have any kind of outlet unless they were touring around and playing in little clubs or something like that. They had no way to have any kind of outlet for their music unless they they went through a major label because the only way that the music was getting to anybody was on radio. Yeah. And so and the, the major labels, labels had the connections at the at the radio right. station. And they were they were holding on to all those spots on those charts, you know. Yeah. So it's it's still kind of like that. You know, that game is a really expensive game. And, you know, once you start getting to the top of the charts, it's it's hard to bust through, um, you know, if you're not if you don't have really deep pockets or you're not on a major label because yeah. it's it's really expensive. But yeah. at the same time, and this is my area of expertise, you know, for the past 15 plus years, I've been working with people on branding and their social media. And that's where, yeah. you know, because there is granted, I do believe that at, at some point in time you get to the level where you need that help. You know, you have to get that, yeah. that, that oh, help yeah. from somewhere, but to even get to that level, you have to put together this package of visibility and that, you yes. know, and that, that means, you know, in, in a modern day and age, that means that you need to have a good YouTube channel, a good Facebook, yeah. Facebook is, is less important now as much as Instagram, you know, and some yeah. people utilize Twitter, but like whatever platforms you use, you have to do them well. And you have to really yeah. know how to put it out there. Well, and I think that's interesting you say that because if you, I have, if you go to some, you know, social media marketing webinars, I've been to a few and some of them have said, you know, pick the two that you're, that you're really into because it's going to be hard to cover them all. And yeah. I think that's, that's really true. And it, you know, somebody's just starting out to think that is a, is probably good advice, you know, because you can really spread yourself thin. And then having all the components that that feed all that, the mm-hmm. graphics, the photos, yes. the, you know, the content making is yeah. endless. I know for artists on Lucky Sky, Tori Martin, she's constantly creating content and she's really good at social media. She, you know, she does uh, a lot on, uh, she does stories all by herself. And then we have somebody obviously that does her editorial calendar, but, but it, it's a lot. It's a it's lot a for ton. an artist. It's a ton. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's like this endless hole that you have to, you keep feeding. You got to keep feeding this. You know, yeah. I, I always remember like I, one of my friends who's a, is a big influencer and he, he has a great channel. He does this martial arts, like spoof stuff, me, uh, Matt page and his martial arts page is called master Ken. And one of the things that, you know, when I was chatting with him, I likened it to like those wood chippers because no matter how much <laughs> wood you put into them, They'll just churn it out and spit it out the other side. 
the, well, it makes me think of like a bucket of water. You know, I read this recently. Somebody was talking about retiring and they were feeling bad about if they were going to be replaced or something or forgotten. And they and their uh, their boss said, well, imagine you put your hand in a bucket of water and when you pull it out, that hole gets filled up, you know, and it's kind of like that with content. Yeah. You know, yep. it is an endless bucket yep. and in of the- stuff that you and the the thing is, is like with the algorithms, you have to have regularity. And so I, and yep. I think like, you know, so say you have a music video coming out, you need to have lead up content kind of promoting it yes. up until the, the video comes out. And then once the video comes out and then you got to go and then again, be pushing it again once it gets up on Spotify and other platforms or, or, or Apple, yes. pod, Apple music, yes. or, or, you know, um, so there's, there's, there's a ton of stuff that you have to be doing, but yes. again, I still think if you create a formula that works for you, you can yes. create magic, you know? And, and I look at like, there's a bunch of artists that are doing really well, um, with tapping into, again, they pulled into the cover stuff and then they went into original content after that. Um, voice Avenue mm-hmm. is one or, mm-hmm. uh, uh, music travel love, which they used to be the MoFats and they created a new channel, but they're, they're maximizing the algorithms because it's all about the algorithms and knowing how to do it. And so, but that yeah. was, one of the challenges too, like original content is not rewarded as much on the social media outlets. Yeah. And so that's tricky. Yeah. Well, it's, I think it has to do with control. Yep. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if those outlets, what they own and everything, they, you know, they make all these blank. I mean, but I guess if they make blanket deals with, with uh, the performing rights organizations, everybody would be covered as long as they're correctly registering their music, that kind of thing. But I wanted to mention the thing about consistency, because I think, Consistency is the key in regards to to being a great writer, to being a great anything. Yeah. You know, and if you want to be a great songwriter, and, and I don't know per capita how many songwriters there are in Vietnam, and uh, if there are cool outlets for people that are creating music to go out and perform. But if you're working at it, uh, then you're going to get better eventually. You're yeah. going to get better at it. But you, you can't dabble, and you can't dabble at being involved in the industry either. If you, if you really want to get your songs to be recorded or that kind of thing, then you have to find the outlets where, you know, you're up on the news, you know, what, what are people looking for? You know, the tip sheets the you know, the song trader kind of platforms where they give you opportunities to pitch your music to commercials, that kind of thing. So I, I just think that consistency is, is really a key. And I also believe in, constricted creativity, you know, where you say, I'm going to spend two hours on this and I'm going to be completely focused and I'm not going to be distracted by anything or anybody or emails or phone calls or TV or whatever distracts you and really, really hone in on your focus. I I, I I have to set a timer for myself and say, I am not going to do anything else during this time. My five-year-old daughter doesn't always agree with that plan. (laughs) <laughs> but everything else, normally, I, I just have to set the timer. Okay, no Facebook, no Instagram, and just really, what am I doing for this time? And so I think that's, yeah. I, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, I really like, there was, um, I'd like to hear about how did you, how did you dive into to your music career, your songwriting career? Oh, how- Sure. Well, uh, I'm originally from Ohio. My husband, Bill Warner, is from Ohio. We moved to Nashville. I'll make this brief because this is a very long story. (laughs) But um, we moved to Nashville. Oh, gosh, we've been here for about 30 years now. Yeah. And we moved here to begin in the music business. We got signed as a writing team. We had a few cuts. We had a Patty Loveless cut. She was a country artist some years ago, uh, real popular, if anybody wants to look her up. And, and, you know, the cut didn't make it. And so eventually I, Bill was into the production thing. So he got involved in working for Reba McIntyre's company. And then I uh, went on the road with an artist who was on Columbia Records. And when I came off the road with her, um, I really wanted to focus on songwriting and Bill, we had a plan. And this is the P word. I want to tell all of your yeah. listeners, if you're going to do something like this, you have to have a plan of how yeah. you're going to this because 
let's face it, we all have to eat. We have to make money to survive, pay our rent, that kind of stuff. So you have to be, you have to be, have a good understanding of your plan. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, you know, I'll do this over here. I'll do all the production engineering and you write. So I put my nose down and I just wrote and, you know, it wasn't an overnight thing for me of, uh, you know, having cuts and that kind of stuff. It was, it was a process. And then, uh, I started to write with people that were scary to me, people me that really that. challenged me, mm. you know what I mean? And so I think it's important to not get in a writing room and have it always feel really safe in the sense of, uh, you know, you're the best one in there yep. because it's good to be challenged. It's yep. really good to be challenged. That makes you better, you know, if, if you, you know, go the extra mile. So, um, uh, I met this writer, David Kent, and he also is from Ohio and had lived here for some time. And he had had success. He had had hits. And so uh, one day I was going to go write with another writer. And uh, this is really fast forwarding. And uh, he had this message on his answering machine that said, if this is Austin, I still love you. And I said, wow, we should write that idea. And he said, I don't want to. I've written too many songs about my jilted love affairs. So I, you, you can have the idea. So I was writing with David Kent the next day and I took the idea to David and he said, Oh my gosh, you know, he he doesn't want that idea. No, he doesn't want it. So we, we spent, um, you know, probably about six or seven hours talking about what we wanted to do with that idea. And I wanted it to be kind of like a a mini movie. Like, you know, the story was, it was going to be a story song and it was going to evolve. Yeah. So that was kind of how that came about. And, um, but but right, as for writing, it, it was just a process of some years yeah. of just meeting people. And, you know, you write with certain people and you just decide, you know what, we should just hang out because it, it's not working out, you know, that we're writing. That doesn't really happen to me anymore. That hasn't happened to me in some years now because you soon learn who you are as a writer and the kind of writers that you that you really make magic with. Nice. And I really think when you're a new writer, you should write with a lot of people. Yeah. You should write by yourself, but then you should collaborate because yep. collaboration sparks a lot. It's you know what I mean? So, and especially, especially in the new social media age, collaboration yeah. is king because if yeah. you can collaborate, yeah. you broaden your reach. You know, and yeah. it's it's yeah. one of the best things that you can do. And it and you don't yeah. know, you will never know which is the project, which is the thing, which is the person that's gonna be helpful. Right. You never know. Well look at look at the the the, the case, case in point, just what you're saying of Blake Shelton. Right. So we we write the song, we make a demo, David's publisher pitches it to Clay Walker. He drops the whole project and she says, well, I've got this other baby act named Blake Shelton. (laughs) And so David called me and said, what do you think we should do? I said, well, he's a really good singer. We'll get a really good cut out of it. It's exactly what I said. And who would have ever known it would it would be this career breaking song for this guy. It's it's amazing and it's so exciting. And that's why. You can never give up and you can never discount people who are new, but you know, you have to, you have to pay attention. You have to pay attention because now like you're talking with social media, there are so many people out there and let's face it. Not everybody that's releasing music is great. They're, they're just, they're not, I can't lie. Not everybody is or great or uh, Mm -hmm. groundbreaking or whatever you want to say. And as an artist, you know, you want to be that, but not everybody has a thing. Yeah. And that's just one of those things. God goes, Bink, you have a thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and that's you know? the thing you, and you, that's so true that it, it, as, as a singer, you have to pay attention to finding that good content and finding stuff that's really resonates with you and really is, is powerful. And, and for the songwriters, yeah. it, I put it this way, right? I have a ton of content that I have now recorded with people. I made a lot of videos and I'm not trying to be, um, I only want to interview people now 
that want to be interviewed, that want to be uh -huh. there, that really yeah. are like, if I message someone and they're like, oh, that sounds kind of interesting. Yeah, let, let's chat next week. If they're like, dude, that's awesome. I would love to be there. Let's talk about it. If they really come with a solid energy, yeah. then I'm, I'm, I'm more into it. But I'm not chasing yeah. people down. I'm not running after people. Yeah. I'm not. And, and I think that the same is with music. You, it, It's not that you have to be selective, but you have to be selective. And you have to pay attention. You, you have to pay attention. And you, and you have to be ready. Yeah. When you go, I mean, I'm flipping, flopping back. And I'm talking about now writing. You have to be ready when you go in that room. If you're all of your yeah. new writers listening to this show, if you're going into a room with somebody, honor the people that are in there, especially the ones that have had more success than you to this point. Mm -hmm. You have to show up with the ideas. You have to you have to have given it some time. And for Pete's sake, learn to play an instrument. <laughs> you can't just you can't just be showing up and saying, I'm a great singer. Uh oh, you know. I'm not going to contribute in this way. Learn your instrument. Learn to play the guitar. Learn to play the piano, whatever. Not too yeah. many songs being written with somebody playing the flute. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You have to be able to contribute. Or, you know, if you're a production person and that's your instrument, yeah. you know, you can show up and contribute that way. I don't know. I get very bored with um, somebody comes in a room and, and they don't bring an idea. It's like, dude, you know show up with something. Yeah, come in no. with something. Come in with, with whether it be a thought, a story, yeah. Uh, yeah. words, or a, a title, melody. Whatever. You come in yeah. with something. And putting yeah. in the, um, you know, I, I personally believe that the best songs, the most powerful songs are like with Austin. There is a story there. There is something yeah. there. And, and, and it's a story that's relatable. It's a story that that can be anchored in something. You know, it, it, yeah. if you go back to great hits throughout history, there was always an element of that, you know? Right. Well, I think that's true. And I also think that when you have a great idea for a song, you know, we always say it writes itself and we're really, yeah. I mean, you're helping it along. But if you have a great idea for a song, there there's a really good chance that you're going to walk out of that room with something, you know, pretty amazing you're going to have started on something that really could mean something to the song and to something to the artist you who you hope sings it you know yeah. and the, the name of the game in Nashville now is of course writing with artists um you know so much has changed in the music business over the last mm -hmm. 50 years and how you know how artists came to be artists that never wrote songs like a great artist, like a Patsy Cline or, right. you know, somebody like that who never really wrote songs. You know, there aren't many singers anymore that don't write their own music or have something to do with it. Yeah. It's, it's a real different game, you know? It's and at the same time, if some, if somebody is a new artist, then you, and you get involved with them, you, you better be ready to be in it for the long haul in this sense of writing with them, because it could be, you know, two to three year process of really the artist really getting to the point of being released, recording, all that stuff takes time. Yeah. You know, when you write with somebody, if you wrote four songs for their record, well, they've probably hopefully got another 20. Well, they're going to pick, they're going to cherry pick from that pile. And you may or may not get anything in that, in that session. And usually mm -hmm. artists, cut a couple of sessions, they take their time and it's got to be mixed. It's got to be mastered, all that. Well, you know, you're talking about right there. You're talking about probably seven or eight months. Yeah. So you, you know, you have to be, you have to really be invested in that person. It, it, there, I think that's an excellent point. And I think that that's from the artist side, this is why, You have to bring something to the table. You have to yeah. be prepared oh, yeah. to bring something to the table. Like, you know, what is it that you are trying to do? What is it that you are trying to say? What is it that is the message? I, I'm going to pull a personal, personal thing that my wife and I, um, for us, one of the things that we try to bring to the table is a story. It's a message. Yeah. And like yeah. the idea of 
for me and everything, and this is something that I believed in firmly since the moment I started doing content for us, we wanted to preach just positivity and, and yeah. connecting to people. And that right there is what we try to bring. And my wife I brings it, you know, absolute level of professionalism and her hard work and her career. And those are things right. that, you know, that she brings in. And, and from a, a singer songwriter, these people are bringing their creative ideas and their, their, their mojo. You know what I mean? It's like they're, yeah their their charisma too and, and their power with words yeah. and then these two groups come together and you create this magical mix you know well and don't you feel and you since you work with social media and branding and marketing don't you believe that there are a lot of people that they don't take the time to understand who they are i think and that that's is the a really biggest problem thing. Mm -hmm. you know we're all influenced by other uh, other outlets in the environment. You know, I remember as a kid, you know, who I was influenced by when I was singing and who you know, as a kid and who, who really moved me. And you, when you listen to those people, you don't want to just be them and copy them. You want to take what they have and you want to put that in your soul. And then what do you come up with, you know, with your own unique gift? Yep. So I think that's another thing that's so important to artists, I'm not saying don't look at what other people are doing, but I think it's really important to understand who you are, yep. be able yes. to describe yourself. Yes. If you were, you know, the elevator pitch thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was, oh, super. The elevator pitch is a perfect example. I, I had someone <laughs> come to me recently, um, about two weeks ago, they had seen my podcast and it was a, a, a uh -huh. group here in Vietnam. And they, uh, they were like, we want you to come and be a news reporter for our channel. And it was a financial channel and it was for, um, a state owned news branch. And I was like, you know what? Not, not my cup of tea because first yeah. of all, I'm not a financial reporter. I'm, I'm preaching creativity, you know? And it's like, if I'm talking about, I don't know anything about the markets. I don't know anything about that. I mean, sure. I'd like to make a lot of money someday, but that doesn't mean I have that. I, that I have any knowledge about stocks or e economics. Right. You know, that's not my cup of tea. You're going to spend all your time studying that and not enough time to do what you want to do. <laughs> exactly. And, and I thought, and I, and I sat there and I kind of pictured myself and my vision uh, for what I would yeah. like to create, you know, my 10 year, 20 year picture. And I was like, yeah, that doesn't fit. It doesn't fit it. And, and that's where yeah. you, you talked about something earlier and I loved it. You have to have a plan. Yes. You have to have a plan for your career. Doesn't mean that well, it's always going to go the way you think, but you got to have a plan. Right. Well, you, you, uh, you were just saying that about the, you know, five, two, five year, 10 year, 20 year, you know, uh, goals. Yeah. And I, I studied with a really great acting coach for a couple of years and his big thing was to read that book, the artist way, the oh, artist yeah. way by Julia Cameron. It, it's such a great book. And it really changed my creative life. That book uh, really did for me. And he would talk about, you know, the whole thing of visualization. And, and to this day, you know, it's like I I always visualize myself, you know, on a stage with a spotlight, you know, speaking or performing to uh, large groups of people. And, you know, they're all smiling and that kind of thing. And you, you have to, I think, meditate on those thoughts and visualize yes. those kind of thoughts. And, and you bring that to yourself and you have to be real uh, about your strengths and your weaknesses. And then if you've got something that you're, you're weak at, then you need to work at it. Yes. You know, if you're not a great guitar player, then you need to work at it. If it's going to be part of your show or whatever it is. I mean, that's kind of a broad stroke comment, but, 100%. but I really, I really believe in the, in the plan. I think yeah. it's really important. Well, I the, think I, the, the setting thing, you know, I love, and I love what you pointed out with the, um, you know, know what your strengths are and play to those and then find out what you're not like. And then this is one of yeah. the things that I'm, my wife and I are a good team because things that I'm really good at, she's, I'm, I am phenomenal at networking and building out teams yeah. and, and yeah. connecting people. That's my, my strength. My dad was, mm -hmm 
the nicest guy is the nicest guy on the planet and everyone loves oh al yeah al's great i'll do anything for al and my dad <laughs> ingrained that into us of just it wasn't about networking yeah. it was just about being real with people and and yes. seeing what do you need and how can i help you with that and my wife yeah. is not strong with that you know and so there's yeah. this and so when i look at our our work dynamics you know it, it, we all have things we can get better at and and i think that's oh, huge yeah. You have to know it. Well, my my husband, Bill, and I are a really good team, and uh, we always have been. And you know, you know, you like you you and your wife, you're you're kind of like a power couple. That's how we view ourselves. You know, just you're powerful together. Yes. You know, you're powerful together, and and you can do a lot. And and I always feel sorry for the people that don't have a relationship with someone uh, that they can really bounce ideas off of. You know, because there there's a lot of people in Nashville that are that are have really good teams with their spouses or their partners, whoever, and uh, and their careers really you know are amplified by yeah. that because well, it's it's great to have support. It is, and, and I think that you know if you can have people around you that support you, and and one of the things that I yeah. preach to people is build your tribe, build your tribe. Oh yeah, you have to. Oh yeah. You have to have this, this team of people around you and, and be willing to be part of someone else's tribe too, you know, to, That's exactly right. to help them, to, 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 to be there for them. Because at the end of the day, we all, success is never an island. And anyone no. who, who gets ahead, there have been a, a, a mountain of people that have been behind them, that have assisted Well, it's really, it's really true. Did you ever read that book called The Magic? It's about gratitude. And one of the ladies, mm -hmm. the, auth the author of that book, The Magic, I think is one of the ladies that was in on The Secret some years ago. You know that book, The Secret? All right. And you're preaching, all you're, about, you're preaching uh, to the choir on that. I'm a big believer. <laughs> and it's all about you know, the magic of gratitude. And my, when I was a kid, my mom used to always talk about gratitude, you know, yeah. thanking people, and, you know, that kind of thing. And, and I, I think too, it's, it's important to be nice, you know, even if you're yes. giving somebody the bad news about, I don't like your song, whatever it is, you know, right. <laughs> uh, you need to cut your hair, you know, your branding ideas, whatever, you, you know, you ha you have to tell them in a positive and a nice way because there's so many people out there that don't have anybody supporting them yeah. and just you, just the, the kind words of you know talking talking to them about their song even it can mean the world to someone i'm doing a screenwriting class right now and in my I did a screenwriting class once that was interesting it's fun i'm doing my master's yeah. in, in in creative writing and with an emphasis in screenwriting and and i love writing I, I have my two sides. I love music and I also love writing and film. Uh -huh. And one of the things that was interesting is the assignment this week was to look at other people's beat sheet. And so they broke down the different beats of different films, right? And so I got to look at other people's beat sheets and then I had to give feedback on their story. And there was one person who had a masterfully created story. And I studied acting as well. And, and, and I love the idea of what is your goal? What is your objective? What are you trying to get? You know, because oh, yeah. every character, even if it's a song, there was a great, great acting teacher that I, I, I studied with um, who would taught theater, like uh, musical theater. And one of the things that he was talking about is every time that you're singing a song, your character is trying to get something from another person. Oh, yes, yes. And, and I think this is so true for singers. You know, what, what is the character in the song? Yes. What, you know, what's their history? Exactly. Who are they in the song with? Exactly. Who, who is the, uh, who is the other relationship? So That's so true. fun. It's That's so, so fun. important. It's so important. Because... I love that. Yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I loved that about acting. I love that about acting too. You know, when we have to create the history of a character. Yes. Because obviously it's you portraying that person, but still to be thinking beyond your own history and your own likes and dislikes. And what would that yes. character be like? Well, it's really, it's, when, it's fun. When I start writing, you know, um, when I start putting together, I'm not, I'm not a great songwriter. Don't, don't even, I'm not even, a, I'm not even alluding to that. I, I'm good with lyrics though. I'm good with words. And, and so okay. one of the things, cause I've, I've, I've been a writer for so long, you know, and one of the things that, that I love to do, when I'm writing a song, because I think a lot of people write songs from their perspective, but I'd like to, to jump into the mind of a character 
And then from yeah. that character, what is that character writing? You know, and, and I think that, you know, yeah. you can spur your creativity by jumping out of your own box, you know, and I think it's such a fascinatingly mm -hmm. fun thing. It is. What time is it for you right now? Uh, it what is, time is, okay. it is 1040. And so I normally start into my podcast around 10 or 11 and then go to a one okay. or two. <laughs> so it's late, but it's, it's quiet. And, um, sure. my, my wife's career is extremely busy. And so she's always prepping yeah. and doing costumes and I'm, I'm the primary parent. And so I handle my daughter oh, okay. and I do our editing and I do the business and I push everything ahead. But right now it's, um, it's okay. I, I like it. So I, I, I taught children for a long time early in my career. And when I moved really? to Vietnam, it is a part-time job while I was building up my other stuff. And so I'm really good with kids. <laughs> Just yeah. Oh, that's great. It. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of easier. And once COVID hit and all the schools closed, it was just a natural progression for me to kind of take mm -hmm. over with the homeschooling and teaching. So it works. I had, I had a kid's television show that was on for a while. That's, I, I saw that. I, I, uh, I, I did outreach for a museum here in Nashville. I started there as a volunteer and then they found out that I had this kid's album called, um, uh, Tina Ticcolini gets giggles and goosebumps and it's all about how your body works or all songs about that. So I developed a program for them and I would go out as this That's zany awesome. character um, and, you know, do the school programs. That's really awesome. Yeah. Now, now a question for you, where do you go for your inspiration? Oh boy. You know, I'm really inspired by movies. Oh, me too. And I'm really, and I'm really inspired by music I get, I'm, I'm really into, uh, listening to other songs, you know, uh, from songwriters here in Nashville, you know, people that are on the charts and you know, how they, how they turn the phrase and that kind of thing. Mm. I'm really inspired by, uh, by that, but I'm, I'm very inspired by movies. I love movies. I always have, I love the stories of movies and, you know, how characters progress through the film and, I, yeah. I absolutely love it. And I've, I've got a lot of song ideas from watching movies. That's awesome. So I love that. Yeah. I, there's one movie that is just always, um, I just, I'm, I, it's one of the ones I can watch over and over and it has such a beautiful soundtrack to it. Have you ever seen the movie Fury? It's with Brad Pitt. It's a, it's a, it's I've a, never heard of that movie. Oh, it's so good. It's on Netflix. Um, it's the story of a group of American soldiers in World War II in a tank. Ooh. And, oh, okay. And so it's really intense and it's really beautifully shot. Um, but the music in that movie is so it's powerful. Beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh. And the final scene, there's a final showdown scene. I won't give away the story, but the, the music around that scene is just so powerful. And so it's got Brad Pitt oh, okay. and uh, a bunch of other great actors. It's really good. I'll have to look for that. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I should also say this too. I, I get very inspired by nature, but I have to say like, while I'm in having experience in nature, I'm on a hike or, you know, you're, you know, go look at some beautiful Vista, you know, like out West in the Grand Canyon, something like that. I'm not standing there thinking, Oh, I got to write a song down. It's just, there's something about that experience that I think really relaxes you. And then somewhere down the road for me, uh, I have that feeling and, and it gives me an inspiration of, of something that I want to write. When that happens for me, that's mainly piano music. I've composed a lot of uh, instrumental piano music, you know, that I pitch and um, and that kind of situation is what inspires me, that kind of thing. Songwriting, you know, movies, and, and, uh, you know, stories like that, that I see in movies that inspires me more, you know, to come up with a story for a song or come up with an idea for a song in that way. But I think it's good to get outside and, uh, be quiet, yeah. you know, and just, and just relax, uh, relax in nature. We, we have a nice place in our yard. We have a sitting rock and I like to go out there and, just listen, you know, in the, in the early morning when it's quiet and just listen to all the sounds. I think that's, that's really inspiring, but well, just more like in a relaxing way for me because my life is so crazy and I think it's good to, you know, to make time to, to be quiet. 
<laughs> You're preaching to the choir on that one. <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm taking. We're taking a kind of a family day, and um, we're going to oh, go to the I zoo. See. And there's a beautiful oh, botanical gardens and zoo here. The zoo is not oh. as nice, but the botanical gardens were 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 built yeah. by the French. And they have these beautiful, like, uh, so many different trees and, and, and plants. It's really? really That's yeah. interesting. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, yeah. The, the, old, the old Saigon Zoo. It's really beautiful. Wow. Like a, a lot wow. of really a, a beautiful collection of plants there. And, you know, the animals, are, the animals are in better care than they used to be. But, um, That's good. Yeah. Aww. But it's nice. <laughs> it's nice to, to, to get out and to see, to see, just to be... Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of a hippie like that. I love being out in plants and nature. Oh yeah, it's it's really, it's really amazing that to me when people, you know, in Nashville it's growing so fast. When people want to, you know, create a subdivision, and it's like, can't you leave some of those trees? Yeah, right. <laughs> you, know, you have to rip everything down. Oh it's tricky, gosh, man. my mom my mom grew up in Southern California when Orange County was full of orange trees. You know, and now, oh, wow. now Orange County has no orange trees. It's just no solid. <laughs> it's solid city. You know, from from San yeah. Diego to L.A. is almost like a solid city now. I always think about when you know Lewis and Clark went across the country <laughs> and they first walked up on that ridge and looked at the Pacific Ocean. I mean, just what you know, what the whole country must have seemed like. But California had yeah. to be so different then. Yeah, you know when it was. When it was untouched. If you, you look know? at turn of the century LA photos, like turn of the century Los Angeles photos, it was like dirt huts. You know, I mean, it was really yeah. like yeah. California was <laughs> nothing in the 19, in 10, yeah. 1920s and such, you know, or not, not 1920s in the 19, early 1900s. So now, now what advice would you, if you could go back in time, what advice would you give to a younger version of yourself? I think, uh, to come to Nashville sooner than we did. Mm -hmm. I think that we, we moved to California speaking of that state for a while. And I think we should have come straight on to Nashville. I think we should have, um, we should have understood the whole songwriting thing more mm -hmm. earlier. That, that is something that we didn't really have a grip on that. And I mean, how do you know, you know, we right. were in Ohio <laughs> We, you know, we're just up there kicking around song ideas and we don't know what we're doing. Then we came, this is funny. And we came down here and we go and we have a meeting at Sony tree and we met with somebody that was a friend of a friend and the guy took a meeting with us and he was in the Christian division and we weren't writing Christian songs, but he met with us and he turned around in his chair and he said, do you listen to the radio? And I thought, what is this guy talking about? Of course I listen. What do you mean? Do we listen to the radio? Because the music we were writing didn't sound very commercial at that time. Ah. And, you know, you, you don't understand until yeah. you start listening to it when somebody's pointing out, well, you know, this is, this is what you need to have in a commercial song. You need to have this strong hook or, you know, all, all those elements that make a really good commercial song. <laughs> so that was something that's, that's a, that's a, that's a poignant. I, I remember one of the first screenplays that I wrote and I pitched to someone and they looked at me and they're like, this is expensive. Go back and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah. this is an expensive story. And I was just like, and, and I'm working on, on a story with my friend right now. And I was like, I want this one shot to be shot through Zoom. Why? Because it would drive the price down and it would be really cheap to do it that way. And, and she was like, well, how about we do this and have this chase scene? And I was like, I'm thinking that's that, too expensive. That, it's ex <laughs> too expensive. You know, we're talking micro budget film here, you know. That, and so I think that those people who the artist has to find out how to balance with the business person. And I love that it was one of your first points that you have to treat this like a business. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's probably, you know, and as a kid, I was really into musical theater. There was a big part of me that always thought I'd end up living in New York city, being on Broadway, you know, that kind of, that kind of a dream. And, um, I remember my mom said, you know, you should go to Nashville. And I was like, ah, Nashville, who, you know, that kind of idea. And I think if we had come here sooner, it, you know, you, I would have been 10 years ahead of the game yeah. by the time I got here and really started getting into it. And it, cause it takes time yeah, it to takes immerse time. into an environment, meet people, network, that kind of thing. 
And, and in Nashville, the hang is the name of the game. Hanging yeah. out, going to events, going. I mean, there's nobody can ever say there's no way to meet anybody here because there are thousands of ways to meet people in this town, and it's happening every night of the week. You know. Yep. So, it's all about networking. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, networking. If you're a shy person, networking can kind of be an excruciating experience. I guess you know, you and I don't seem to be like the kind of people that are. <laughs> Uh, having trouble talking to others because I <laughs> don't and never have. But I always say to people, if if you're shy, you know, go go to something that's small. Go to some yeah. meetup that's something of your interest and have three questions and go around and talk to three people and yeah. ask them those same three questions. You're going to start a conversation with somebody because not everybody's going to be shy in that room. No. You know, and, they, they're at a meetup because they yep. want to try to get something going on. <laughs> right. And I think it's about willing to take that chance, you know, to just go out and see, because I think that openness, yeah. openness to whatever, to life, kind yeah. of life, kind of open doors for you is what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, it's really true. Now, now if you had uh, uh, Aladdin's lamp, what would you wish for? World peace would be the first oh, no. thing. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm being funny, but. Uh, the first thing, yeah. that I, the, the one thing that I would really wish for is that more people understood their gifts. Oh, I love that. And more people were not afraid to go after some of their gifts. And I'll segue that into this course that I just published called Spark Your Creativity. It's something that I always wanted. I always wanted to write a course. And I, I just really believe that everybody's a creative being and I, I want to try to help people understand how to tap into who they are in I that way. That. And I'm that. not saying that, you know, you have to uproot your life and move to a music center or anything like that. You can be who you want to be right in your hometown. It's just be the best person that you were born to be yeah. and, and figure out who you are creatively, because I didn't, I think that's, What's wrong with the world? I think so many people don't, they're so unhappy because they, they want things that other people have, but they yeah. don't look at their own gifts. Yes. I don't know. That's a really broad statement, but. What was it that's, that Marianne, where Marianne Williamson had that quote, your greatest fear is not that you are inadequate, but that you are uh, powerful beyond measure or something like that. It was this famous quote. Well, I think a lot of people are afraid of being successful because they're, yes, they're afraid they're going to fail or something. I, yeah. I, yeah. I don't understand that. But, but when I was doing my song at a girl camps in, um, in Nashville, one of my big things was about lose the fear. And, and I love that. it's something I learned in acting, you know, write down your fears and then we're going to burn them in a fire, you know, and we'd have a video of a fire and everybody would have to throw those away. And, and, and it's, it's easy when you're with a group of people and everybody's strong and like, yes, we're yeah, going to yeah, beat the fear. Yeah. And then you go off by yourself and it's you again, all along with all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And you have to, and you just have to really figure out how you are going to get around that. Because for some people, fear is so completely, uh, it, it just freezes them. It, my my, it my wife, them in their trap. She, she doesn't always like to talk about it. She deals with massive anxiety. Massive. Oh, really? And every time she goes on stage, I mean, she's, she won she's original winner of Vietnam Idol. She won the ultimate entertainer in 2013. She's been on stages. That's fantastic. Awesome. Like, yeah, she's amazing. Can sing all these genres. You know, she was in the Lion King. She was the, the voice of Beyonce for Vietnam. She was Nala for Vietnam. Oh, wow. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. It's a, it, but every single time she goes on stage, she's terrified. And then once she well, starts know, I'm singing, gonna tell, I'm going to tell her to read this book. It's called the mindless musician. I love that. And I can't even think of the author right now. I'll send you the information on it. I'll look but, it it's, up. But, but the woman who wrote the book's husband was a concert pianist and he would get anxiety. He'd get nerves and stuff before he would go on stage. And it's a really interesting book. She it might help her. Uh, and it's all about things that you can do you know, to 
to not be so afraid or have anxiety. But the other thing too, I think is the perception of ourselves. You know, yeah. we, we, we perceive something before we step on stage and, and it's natural to have adrenaline and everything. You're excited to be out there. Um, I do a show, a Carol King, James Taylor show. And we play with symphonies and everybody has their ritual. You know, I don't like people to talk to me right before I'm going to go on stage. And a lot of times they do, yeah. you know, yeah, they think right? that you, they want to speak to you while Throws you're because they think they should because you're standing there or something, you know. And it sometimes it'll take me a song. It's like I leave my body. It's the weird. Ask your wife mm. if this happens or it's like you leave your body in that first song and then you come back down, you know. It, and it, I just think that's just being in the moment of being on stage. It's it's a, it's adrenaline. It's all those things mm. because you know that you can do it. You you've done it a million times. You know you're not going to fail. You've practiced, you're prepared, um, you know, all that stuff. Why, why do you get nervous? Why do you get anxiety? I don't know. It's, it's something you have to search within yourself, but that book, you know, is really interesting. And she might, she might enjoy that book. Might help I her. definitely, I'll find her a copy. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now that's exciting. Now, now any last bits of advice that you'd like to share with people tonight? I, I just want your your listeners to know uh, that that their their gifts are so important, their talent is important. To keep their eye on their own goal and not look at other people and and try to be somebody else. Their gifts are so important, and to keep their eye on their own goal, to not look at other people yes. and what other people are doing. It, it takes enough just to just to stay focused on yourself. And to never and to never give up on yeah. their dream yeah. to uh, to find a good mentor and and listen to uh, other people's kind criticisms and and not to get caught up in being afraid of putting their stuff out there and just to be just to be a good person and to try to create create things that that move people that uh give people happiness i love that thank you for coming on thank tonight you. this was a pleasure oh, a, it was so much fun yeah it was a blast for me uh...